Hey, this is Presh Walker. Sports betting has evolved from an activity of the few in just certain locations to being mainstream in many sports leagues. Even if you were just browsing the news, you might come across betting odds. What exactly do these numbers mean? This video is neither to encourage nor discourage sports betting, but rather to understand the numbers and the mathematics behind them to be an informed citizen. I'm going to go over three of the most common ways that sports betting odds are represented. Let's start out with money line or American odds. Here's an example of a money line, Chicago plus 150. This means you place a bet of $100 for a profit of $150 if Chicago wins. If Chicago loses, you lose your $100 bet. Is this a good gamble? Mathematically, we can calculate the implied probability that Chicago wins. This will be 100 divided by 150 plus 100, which equals 40%. If there's a higher than 40% chance of Chicago winning the game, this would be a profitable gamble. And if there is a less than 40% chance, this would not be a profitable gamble. Moneyline can also be expressed as a negative number, like New York minus 120. This means New York is a favorite to win the match. This means you need to bet $120 for a profit of just $100 if New York wins the game. Again, we can calculate the implied probability that New York would win the game, and this will be 120 divided by 120 plus 100, which equals approximately 54.5%. Odds can also be expressed in fractional form, like Chicago 6-4. This means you need to bet $4 for a profit of $6 if Chicago wins. We can also convert this to an implied probability as 4 divided by 4 plus 6, and this is equal to 40%. So again, if you think Chicago has more than a 40% chance of winning the game, this would be a profitable bet. And if you think Chicago has less than a 40% chance of winning the game, it would not be a profitable gamble. Odds can also be expressed in decimal form, like 2.5. You can think about decimal odds as a multiplier. For every $1 you bet, you'll get a total payout of $2.5 if Chicago wins. We can also convert this to an implied probability, and this is just 1 divided by 2.5, which equals 40%. So we now have different ways of expressing exactly the same implied probability. Money line odds of plus 150 are equivalent to fractional odds of 6 over 4, are equivalent to decimal odds of 2.5, are equivalent to an implied probability of 40%. That's mathematically, at least. We're not going into the details of how the bets are taken and actually whether they pay out the whole amount. In fact, sports betting lines often have an advantage built into them. So how might the sports books have an edge? Let's take an example of a match between Team A and Team B. Let's say Team A to win has a money line of plus 200. Team B to win has a money line of negative 250. Let's calculate the implied probability of each team winning. So Team A will be about 33.3% and Team B will be 71.4% approximately. Now, if you add up these implied probabilities, you'll get a number that is larger than 100%. Now, if you had money line odds that were exactly fair gambles, and only one team could win, the two probabilities would have to add up to 100%. So you could see there's an edge that's baked into these lines. So you want to be careful about strictly relying on only the numbers. There's a lot of psychology and other factors that go into sports betting. But now just to return to the mathematics, let's suppose we have a general implied probability of P. Let's write some general formulas. If the money line is plus M, the formula is 100 divided by M plus 100. For fractional odds of W slash B, you want B divided by B plus W. For decimal odds D, you just take one divided by the decimal odds. Now, if the money line is a negative number, negative N, you take N divided by N plus 100. So why exactly are these formulas true? I'm going to give a justification. Let's start out with a money line bet of plus 150. So in one case, you could win, and if you did win, you would win $150 profit. You could also lose, 
and then you would be out your bet of $100. So this will be minus 100. Let's say your probability of winning is P. So that'll be the probability of the upper branch. That means your probability of losing is one minus P. That's the lower branch. So to calculate the expected value, we take P multiplied by 150. So that'll be 150 P. Then we take one minus P multiplied by negative 100. We add this. So this will be minus 100 multiplied by one minus P. For this to be a fair gamble, the expected value of the game has to be equal to zero. So we can now solve this equation for P. We have 150p minus 100 plus 100p is equal to zero. So 250p is equal to 100, or p is equal to 0.4, which equals 40%. Now, what if the money line was a general positive number like plus m? So if you win, you get a profit of m. If you lose, you lose $100. So we again put the probability of winning and losing here. We can calculate the expected value by taking p multiplied by m. Then we take one minus p multiplied by negative 100. We add these together, the expected value has to be equal to zero. So we now just solve this equation for P and we get the general formula, P is equal to 100 divided by M plus 100. What if the money line was a negative number like negative N? When you win, you get a profit of 100. And when you lose, you lose your bet of N. So that's negative N. We can again now do the expected value calculation here. So we have 100 P minus n multiplied by one minus p, this all has to be equal to zero. We solve this equation for p, and we end up with the formula that p is equal to n divided by n plus 100. Now let's do fractional odds. Let's say you have six over four. So if you win, you get a profit of six. If you lose, you lose $4. So again, we'll go ahead and do this expected value calculation. We have six p minus four multiplied by one minus P. This needs to be equal to zero. So we can go ahead and calculate P and we get that P is equal to 0.4 or 40%. Now, what about decimal odds like 2.5? This is one thing we have to be a little bit careful about. If you win, you win 2.5, but you have to subtract your bet of one. So your profit is 1.5. So we put 1.5 in this branch. You lose your bet, which will be minus one. So we now go ahead and do this expected value calculation. So we have 1.5 P minus a one minus P. This equals zero. So we just solve this equation for P and we see it'll be P is equal to 0.4 or 40%. So sports betting has become part of our mainstream culture and it's good to understand these numbers and the mathematics behind them. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.